Hangman is a relatively simple game, which means it's great for a beginner level React project, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be a complete cakewalk like a to-do list. There's a lot of complex stuff that still goes into this, which is why it's an interesting and fun project. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a simple Hangman game using React and TypeScript. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're gonna to build this working version of this Hangman clone that you can see on the right hand side of my screen. As you can see, as you're filling out different things on here, if you get the word correct, it'll tell you to refresh because you won. And if you get the word wrong, it'll just show you what the word is and all the letters you missed will show up as red. So it's a fairly straightforward project, but it's a really cool introductory project for React. Now to get started, we're actually gonna be using TypeScript with this project and we're gonna be using Vite to create everything. So if you just type in npm create Vite, that's going to create a Vite application for you. We can just say that we don't wanna install anything. What do we wanna call the project? We'll just call it Hangman, doesn't really matter. And we wanna be using React and specifically we wanna be using React TypeScript. Now that's going to create this folder right here. I'm just gonna move everything into the folder I'm currently in and delete that folder. It's just easier that way for me. And then I'm going to run npm i, which is gonna install all the different dependencies for us. Now, while that's happening, I wanna delete essentially all of the code that's here. I just wanna get rid of everything except for a single return in our app that just returns an h1 that says hi. So that'll be super basic right there. We can get rid of all of these SVGs and CSS files. We don't need that. And then inside of here, make sure we get rid of that CSS file. And now finally, hopefully, if we save all of these different files, everything should work and we can run npm run dev. And that's going to open up our project on the right-hand side of our screen when we click this link. As you can see, we just have the text high being rendered. Now, before we start writing any code, one of the very first things that I like to do is I like to think about what my application is going to do, how the user can interact with it, and what type of information I need to store inside my application. So if we look at this final version of the Hangman game, we essentially need a way to track which letters the person has guessed. For example, I click on C, I need a way to be able to track that I've clicked on the letter C or that I clicked on the you know D keyboard key. So I need a way to track that type of information. I also need a way to track what the current word is. So when I actually fill in a correct letter, for example, this E, it's going to show up on the page like this. And then I need a way to track whether or not they have won or they have lost. Those are kind of all the different things that I need to track. And the two things that are going to change the most that we need to track is going to be the word that we're currently tracking, as well as the characters that we've currently clicked on or typed. So I'm just gonna create state for that information. For example, we're gonna have a word to guess here, and then I'm gonna have a set function for that, set word to guess. Whoops. And we're just gonna set that equal to use state for now. And we can just put in the word test, for example, and that'll be what our word is set to at the very beginning. Now, if we want to actually get a list of words and dynamically populate it based on that list of words, well, we need to import a list of common English words to use. So I actually already have a list of words that we can use. This is a bunch of common English words. All of them are at least four, four letters long. And if you want to get this exact list, it's going to be in the GitHub repository linked in the description down below. But now that we have that word list, what we can do is we can actually import that word list to use all the words. So I can import words from that word list, a JSON file, and then here in our use state, we can just call a simple function that's going to get a random word from that list. So what I can do is I can just return from that words list a random word. So to get a random word from here, I can do a math.floor of a random number. So a random number is gonna give me a number between zero and one, and I can multiply that by my words.length. And what this line of code right here is doing is it's giving me a random number between zero and one, and then I'm multiplying that by how many words are in my list, and then I'm just taking that and rounding that number down. So it's gonna give me a random number between zero and however many words are in my list, which is gonna give me essentially a random word when I access that from my array. So now I just have a random word to guess. And if I just come in here and I do a simple console log of word to guess, and I go over to our application and I inspect our page, you can see in the console, we get the word process right here, which is just our random word. And if we refresh our page, you can see now we get the word woman. So every single time we're just getting a completely random word. Now the other state that I mentioned we need to track is which letters we have guessed. And the easiest way to do that is just to store them inside of an array. So I can just come in here, get an array called guest letters, do a set guest letters, and set that equal to a simple use state, just like this. And by default, I'm going to initialize it to an empty array. And I also wanna make sure I type this and say that this is going to be an array of strings specifically, and all these strings are just gonna be length of one, but that's okay, we'll just know that on our own. So we're just typing that just so we know exactly what this is. And then right there should be all the state that we really need to store in the application. All the other state, for example, like if you've won or not, or if you've lost or not, all of that we can derive from this different state. 
Now the next thing that I wanna work on is actually implementing the JSX for rendering all of this out. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm just gonna finish off this hangman here so we can actually see we have words at the top that show up. We have the actual hangman drawing. We have the actual hangman like words as well as this like keyboard down here that we can use. So I wanna be able to implement all that in my JSX down here. So to get started, I'm actually gonna wrap everything inside of a div. And this div right here is going to have a style on it. And this style is essentially going to maximize the size that this can be. So when we're on a larger screen, if I just expand this, you can see it has a max size that it can be, as well as for the fact that if we wanna have everything centered like this, all of these styles are gonna be right here. So for example, I wanna have a max width of 800 pixels. I then wanna change my display here to flex, and that's gonna allow us to do a lot of really cool things with centering everything and giving us some random space. And we can change our flex direction to column because we want everything to stack one on top of the other. Next, I'm gonna come in here with a gap of two REM, and that's just going to space out all of my different items with two REM of space between them. We're gonna add some margin of zero and auto. That's just going to center everything inside of my size. So if we're larger than 800 pixels, it'll center everything for us. And then I wanna align my items in the center, and that's just going to center all of the different objects in the middle, which is exactly what we want. So that's kind of like a wrapper container. And now we need to have information for all of our different sections. So this first section is like our text for whether or not we won or lost. That we're just gonna put inside of a simple div. And for example, we're gonna have text that says lose or win. And we're gonna create some code around what text shows up when we get to that point. But for now, I wanna style what that text will look like. I just wanna make the font size on it a bit bigger so it's easier to read. And I wanna align that text in the center. So we're just gonna say text align in the center like that. Now, if you can see, we have that lose win text. And again, we're going to add in code to make it so it shows up properly and works like we want it to with the proper text when you lose or win. But for now, we just have that showing up so we can see all of our JSX. Now, after that, we kind of have three distinct sections and these I want to create as custom components. So we have our drawing, we have the word we're guessing, and then we have the keyboard we're typing on. So I'm gonna create a component called hangman drawing. I'm then going to create another component called hangman word, and that's the actual you know word down here with the red and the black text. And then finally, we're gonna have our keyboard as well. So these are three custom components we're gonna create that are gonna render out the three different sections of our application. So let's create those components now. We have hangman drawing.tsx, and here we can just export function hangman drawing, just like that. I'm just gonna copy this file down twice and make sure we rename it properly. So this is our hangman word, which is going to say hangman word inside of it. And then our final copy here is going to say, whoops, keyboard and keyboard. So now we have our three separate components. We can come in here and we can import those different components. So let's just do imports for all three of those. So now at the top, you can see we've imported all three of those different components. And that's removed a lot of the errors. We just need to actually implement those components to remove this final error. So the first component I wanna work on is going to be our drawing. And the drawing is going to be probably the most complex component we write just because of all the different CSX complexities, complexity, sorry, that we need in order to make all of these different lines show up where we want them to. So I'm gonna have a simple return here because there's really no logic that goes into this, or at least not very much. This is going to return to us a div that's going to wrap everything. And I just wanna give it a style of position relative, and that's just gonna make it so we can absolutely position all the different body parts of our hangman person inside of this container. Now what I wanna do is I wanna have essentially a bottom portion here, this top bar, this right hand side bar, as well as the bar hanging down to connect to the person, because when I refresh, you can see that that's all that shows up at the very beginning. So the very first thing we're gonna render is that bottom bar. So we can just create a div for this, and all of these are just gonna be self-closing divs that just have some style on them. So I can come in here with a style tag, I can say the height is going to be 10 pixels tall. And I can say here that we're gonna have a width of 250 pixels. We're gonna to wanna to set a background to black. And that should just be all we need to do for it to show up on our screen. So if I make sure I add a comment in there and come over here, you can now see we have a black bar that's showing up just like that. Now it's important that we order our CSS elements correctly. So our bottom div is gonna go on the bottom and our upright div, essentially this upright bar here is gonna come next. So they all stack on top of each other because these are not positioned absolutely. They're just in line. So we're just gonna add some style on this. Height is gonna be 400 pixels. Our width is gonna be that same 10 pixels we used for the height on the other element. That's kind of like this common size we're using. Again, we're gonna have black as our background color, of course. And then I wanna make sure this is centered. So I'm gonna do some margin on the left of 120 pixels. And I'll explain exactly where I got that number in just a second. I'll just save and show you it's working. 
So I got this 120 pixels by looking at our width here, which is 250, and essentially I want to divide that by two. That gives me 125. But you'll see here I have 120 as my margin on the left, and that's because our element here is 10 pixels wide. So I need to divide the width of the element by two, which is five, subtract that from 125, and that gives us 120, which will put our line essentially in the center where we want it. Now the next element we want is this top portion here, which kind of overhangs this bottom portion. So to do that, again, it's going to be a self-closing div, and I'm just gonna copy this div that we have here for the vertical line, because we're gonna have all the same properties. Our width in this case is going to be the large thing, so the width here is 200 pixels, and our height is going to be that standard 10 pixels. Now, for this one, we want to, again, make sure our margin left is 120 pixels, and our background is black, and that should be all we need to do. And as you can see, that is showing up in the exact right location where we want it. Now we can move on to the final section, which is this little drop-down thing right here. And this one we will actually have to position absolutely in order to get it to work. So I'm going to copy all the same elements here. Our width in this case is going to be 10 pixels because it's a vertical line. Our height is going to be pretty low. It's only going to be 50 pixels tall. And then we need to come into our positioning to make this absolutely positioned. Because if I right now just save this, you'll notice this line appears above the top portion. Obviously, we don't want that. So here I'm going to set my top and my right to zero. And that should just solve the problem right there. If I save real quick and I make sure that I set this to be a position of absolute, you'll see that that moves directly over into the top right hand corner, which is exactly where we want it. Now this right there takes care of the actual drawing itself, but it doesn't take care of the person that we are drawing. So like when I click on a letter that's not in the word, you can see that the person's head shows up. And then if I click on another letter, the body shows up and so on. We wanna draw all these different elements. So let me just make sure everything's on the screen. There we go. So now let's actually create these elements. And to do this, I'm actually gonna put them inside of variables. The reason for this is because we're actually going to dynamically show these elements, whether or not the word is you know partially guessed, fully guessed, or how many incorrect guesses we have. So let's start with the head here. And for the head, I'm just going to have a simple div. And again, this is going to be a self-closing div that has a style element. All these are going to be very similar, just with you know unique styles for it. So this one is going to be essentially a square or a circle in our case. So it's going to be 50 pixels by 50 pixels. And then what we want to do to make it a circle is we can just say border radius is going to be 100%. That'll make it a perfect circle. And we don't want a background on this. Instead, we want to have a border. And our border is going to be 10 pixels because that's like the common size we've been using for everything. And we want it to be a solid black color. Finally, we need to actually position this in the right location. So we come in here with a position absolute. We're going to set the top value here to 50 pixels. And then I'm actually going to be setting the right value to an interesting value here of negative 30 pixels. And I'll show you exactly why that is. If we come over here and we actually render out the head element, You'll see that it shows in the right location. The way we got this negative 30 pixels is if this was actually set to zero, you can see that the right side of the head is on the right side of this bar. By setting it to negative 25 is what we would think it would be. It's, you can see it's just slightly offset. We need to do negative 30 to take into account the 10 pixel border on our element. Half the width of the border is going to be five pixels. Same with this line right here. We need to take into account the size of that line, which is also 10 pixels wide. Now with the head done, I'm just going to copy this element, come down here and we're gonna do the body and the body is going to be very similar in our case it's going to be that common 10 pixels wide that we've always been doing it's going to be 100 pixels tall obviously we don't have a border for this in our case this one is going to have a background that is black we need to position it absolutely and as for our positions our right on this one is going to be zero because we want it to be as far to the right as possible essentially in line with this other element and then for our top we just need to make sure it's below the head which in our case is 120 pixels so now if we render out the body element, you can see that that shows up exactly where we want it to. That looks really good. Now we can move on to the different arm elements, because as you can see, we have two arms pointing up and two legs pointing down. We need to render all those. So let's just do the right arm. For the right arm, we're going to swap our width and height. So our width is going to be 100. Our height is going to be 10 pixels. We want to have that same background color black position absolute. That's perfect. We also want to be able to set our top and our right position. So our top in our case is going to be 150. And the right is going to be negative 100 pixels. And then we need to do some rotation. Because if I just give this a save and render this out, it's going to look terrible, essentially. So we just do our right arm right there. Give it a save. You can see the arm is just pointing straight out. We obviously want to rotate. So what I can do is I can say rotate. I want to rotate this 30 degrees. And now you can see that our arm is rotated 30 degrees. And in our case, let's do negative 30. So it's pointing up instead of down. But you'll see it's not quite in the right place. It's rotating around the center of the arm. We can use the transform origin property to tell it that we want to offset 
based on the left bottom position of the arm. And that means our rotation is going to occur on the bottom left hand of our arm down here, as opposed to in the center, which means that wherever our left side of our arm is, is where it's going to stay at when we do the rotation. Now let's do the left arm next. It's going to be almost exactly the same. We just need to flip a couple values to rotate the other direction, essentially. So we're gonna have our left arm here. Make sure we render out our left arm. And what I wanna do with height, that's going to be the same position. Everything's gonna be the same. Our rotate is going to be different though. In our case, we're gonna rotate 30 degrees and that's not quite what we want. As you can see, it's in the wrong location. So we wanna rotate on the right hand side instead of the left hand side. And again, still not quite in the right location. And that's because our right position needs to be changed to a positive 10 pixels to show up on the other side of the body line that we've drawn. And now you can see that that's in the exact right location. Last thing we have to do is our two different legs. So I'm just gonna copy down, whoops, this left arm for our right leg. And the leg is going to be almost identical to the arm. Pretty much everything's gonna be the same except for our positions and our rotates. In our case, we wanna rotate this 60 degrees. We want our top position here to be 210 because we want it to be at the bottom of our body. And we want our right here to be negative 90 pixels. And if we just make sure that this is on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side, we give it a save and we render out that right leg. You can see that that right leg shows up in the correct location. We can do the exact same thing with the left leg. Make sure I render that down here. And if I scroll all the way up, obviously we need to flip our rotation and we need to make the origin on the right-hand side. That's already gonna fix a lot of problems. All we need to do is change our right, which in our case, we're just gonna set to zero. And that right there should be everything we need to render out the full person. And as you can see, it looks really good. Now, if we go back to the working version of our app, the next thing I wanna render is our word down here. So let's go to our hangman word and we can just start with this blank slate, do a quick return. And inside here, I'm gonna have a div to wrap everything. That's gonna have some set styles on it. And these styles are gonna be mostly around laying out our organization and changing our font size. So I'm gonna change our display to flex. That's going to make it really easy for us to line everything up. For example, we can give everything a gap which is 0.25 EM, and that's going to scale off the font size, which we're gonna to set to be quite large at six REM. That's just gonna make our font quite a bit bigger. If we save, nothing right now has happened, which is fine. We're going to make it so that it shows up the underlines next. Well, firstly though, we should probably add some font weight to our letters so that we can, for example, have some bold letters. That'll look really good. We also want all of our text here to be capitals. So we're gonna do text transform uppercase to make all the letters capitalized. We're gonna use monospace font for this. Oops, so our font family should be, if I can spell properly, family, monospace. And there we go. That right there is all we need. Give that a quick save. And let's just say we put the word test inside of here. You can see we have that word showing up quite large. But what we wanna do is we wanna take in some word. We're just gonna set a variable here, hard code for now. That's gonna be the word test, just like that. And what we wanna do is we wanna take that word and we wanna render each character individually. So we can take our word and what we can do is we can split on essentially an empty space. And that's just going to split the letter or the word into individual letters. And then we can map through each one of those letters. And we're also going to get the index of that letter's location. Then what we can do once we're done with that is we can actually run a function with that information. If I just get all my parentheses correct and inside of here, I want to return the information for what we're gonna render out. And in our case, we're just gonna render out a single span with that letter. So a span, which is going to contain that letter. Now, obviously we need to do more than just that, but just by doing that, you can see we've spaced out all of our different elements. Now we need to add some styles to this. So I'm gonna come in here with some styles and all I'm gonna do is add some border on the bottom, which in our case is gonna be 0.1 EM solid black. And if we save, you can now see we have an underline for each letter that we're rendering out. And now we need to determine, is this letter going to be visible or is this letter going to be hidden? So again, I'm gonna use another span for that. And this span is going to actually contain our letter inside of it. And this span will determine whether or not our letter is visible or not and what color it's going to be. So let's come in here with some styles. And the style that we wanna check is visibility. So by default, this is gonna be set to hidden. And that means that we haven't guessed the letter yet. But if the letter is in the guest letters, we want to be able to show this as a letter. So we're also gonna have inside of here some like guest letters. And by default, that's an array. Let's just put E in it for now. Or actually, let's do T. So what we can do inside of here is we can check, does our guest letters include this letter? If that's the case, then what we wanna do is we want this to be visible. Otherwise, we want it to be hidden by default. So now you can see we've guessed T, so T shows up. And if we add in another letter, for example, let's say that we've guessed E and we've guessed G, you can see that E is showing up because that's one of the letters in our word. Even though we've guessed G, that one just gets ignored because there's no G in the word. 
Now, the final thing I want to do is I want to add a key here. And the key for us is just going to be the index. I know in React, they generally say not to use the index as your actual key. But in our case, the index is the unique identifier for our letter in our word because each index of our word is going to be a different letter. And that letter is important that it is different. I can't use the actual letter itself because as you can see, this word test already has two T's and that would break the uniqueness that a key needs to have. Now, the final thing we need to work on is our keyboard. So we can come into our keyboard here. And the very first thing we need is a list of all the different keys we can type out. So I'm actually just going to copy over an array that has all the letters all the way from A to Z. And we're going to call it keys at the top. And I'll just close that down so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Then what we can do is we can actually return some information. Inside of here, I want to return a div and I want to give it a style which has a display of grid. Because if we look over here, you can see that these are displayed in like a grid format. And as we expand and we decrease the size of our screen, more or less letters are showing up, which is exactly what we want. So I want to use a display of grid for rendering this out. And I want to set up some grid template columns. Just make sure we get this correct. Whoops. There we go, grid template columns. And for our columns, I want them to repeat and I want it to be auto fit. So however many columns I need for the row, I want it to be. And for the sizing, I want it to be a min max size where the minimum size is 75 pixels and the maximum will just stretch to fill the full size that there is. And then finally, we're gonna add a gap of 0.5 REM between all of our different items. Now, if we just give it a save and we just add some things inside of here, for example, we just add a couple divs that have like the letters T, and we just copy that down a couple of times. So we have four T's. You'll see we have four T's in a grid. It's a little hard to see because the font size is so small, but just trust me on that. Now, instead of just rendering out random T's to the screen, we actually want to loop through each one of our keys. I'm going to take that keys variable. I want to map over that. And for each key, I want to render it out to our screen. And what we can do inside of here is just a simple return where we're going to return a button element and the key I'm going to set to our actual key here. So that's pretty self-explanatory. I want to put the text key inside of that button. So if I just give that a quick save, you can see now we have a bunch of buttons A all the way through Z. One thing you will notice though is our grid is not working properly. Looks like I forgot a parenthesis up here. And now if I save that, that should hopefully fix our grid. That did not fix our grid, but I think I know what the problem is. Here inside of our app, we set this to be a display flex and we aligned our items in the center. We really want our keyboard to stretch. So if I just come in here with a simple style that has align self stretch, that should hopefully stretch to fill the entire container which if we give that a save, you can now see our keyboard is filling up as much space as possible, which is what we want. Now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and style our different buttons because they look really ugly right now. Now, unfortunately with React, with a normal style element, you can't do things like hover or focus, and that's gonna be really important for handling the styles of our buttons. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna be using class names for this. And to do those classes, I'm gonna be using CSS modules. So let's create a file called keyboard dot module dot CSS. This is going to be where all of our CSS modules go. And then we can import that in our keyboard here. So at the very top, we can just say, whoops, import styles from dot slash keyboard dot module dot CSS. And that is going to give us all of our different styles from this module CSS file. So if we just come into here real quick, we can do the styles for our button. We're just going to give it a class of button. So in our case, we're going to have a width of 100%. And in order to actually show what these styles are going to look like, we need to go into our keyboard here and apply that class name. So we can say styles.button, and that should be the class right there. So if I come into my module here and I say like background red, you can see all my buttons now have a red background, which looks perfect. So let's add in a border as well. We're going to do a three pixel solid black border around all of our buttons. We're going to remove the background actually. So we'll say background none. We're going to set an aspect ratio of one to one. That way we have square buttons, which looks really good. I'm also going to massively increase that font size to 2.5 REM, so it's a lot easier to read. I want to make it so our text is uppercase. So we're going to text transform that to uppercase. We're going to add a little bit of padding into all of our different elements. There we go. And I want to make that some bold font. So we'll say font weight is going to be bold. Our cursor is going to be pointer. And then finally, our text color, we just want to make sure that it is going to show up as black. So now you can see all these different buttons are showing up, but of course we don't actually have any of the hover or active or inactive or focus states. So let's add in some hover and some focus states next. And this is the reason we're using CSS instead of React for this, because we can't do hover and focus in React without writing JavaScript. So here I want to set the background color to HSL 200, 100%, and 75%. 
So now if we hover or focus any of these, you can see we get that color showing up, which looks really good. I also want to handle what happens if we have an active button. So over here, for example, all these blue buttons are active and inactive where it is the gray button. And these do not allow me to click on them while these other buttons do allow me to click on them. So what we can do in that scenario is we can come in here with a button dot active and we can come in with a button dot inactive. And for an inactive button, I'm just going to reduce the opacity to 0.3. And for an active button, I'm going to change the background color to a similar HSL 200, 100%. But in this case, we're going to use 50% for the lightness, so it's a little bit of a darker color, and change our color to white. So now if we just change some of these to have that class of active or inactive, we could say here that our styles is going to be a combination of this as well as styles.active. Now all of our buttons are active. Inactive means all of our buttons are inactive, but you'll notice we have a problem here, especially if we try to like disable the button, because if it's active, it should be disabled. When I hover it, you can still see we're getting that hover showing up. We don't want that to happen if the button is disabled. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make sure that it only happens when the button is not disabled. So we'll say not disabled. And in that case, our hover and we do the same thing on our focus means that if we have a disabled button like this, none of our hover or focus states will show up, which is exactly what we want. So now with that done, we can kind of come in here. Let's just remove that inactive class for now and remove this disabled here. And we can go ahead and start implementing some of the logic for this because right now everything's hard coded and obviously that's not what we want. But back in our app, let's think about all the things that we need to do. For our drawing, we need to pass down essentially how many times we've guessed a word. That's all we need to know is just how many times we have guessed a letter. So I can just say number of guesses is going to be equal to, and all I wanna do is figure out how many times we've incorrectly guessed. So I wanna get some like incorrect letters and I want to get the length of that. So we need to turn this into a variable that we're going to use. And this should just be like that, I think. So what we can do is we can come up here. We can say const incorrect letters equals. And we want to try to calculate what this is. To do that, all we need to do is just get all the letters that we've guessed. And I want to filter those letters where the letter is essentially not equal to a letter that's in the word. So where it is not in the word to guess. So what this line of code is saying, all the incorrect letters are the ones where the letter is not in the word to guess. Super straightforward. And now we're just passing down the length of that to our hangman drawing. So let's use this prop inside of our drawing. We'll just scroll up here a little ways, minimize all these different elements so they're out of our way. And now you can see right here, we can just pass in our number of guesses. And we want to set this to the hangman drawing props. This is going to be that TypeScript portion for us. So we need to define this type, hangman drawing props. And we can just say here number of whoops guesses is going to be a number super straightforward that got rid of all of our errors for us and now we can use this number of guesses to determine how many elements we show on the screen so let's create an array that has all of our body parts i can just come up here paste this down you can see our body parts is just an array that has all of our elements and the important thing is they're in order so first we show the head then the body then we're going to show the arms and then we're going to show the legs it's really important that they're in order because what we can do is we can take that body parts array and we can call the method slice on it saying that we want to start at the zero index and we want to get all the elements up to the point for a number of guesses. So if we give this a quick save, you can see currently nothing is showing up. But if I change my guesses here to have a G in it, for example, there's no G in our word. Well, if we hard code our word here, we'll do that real quick. Our word is now test. So we've hard coded our word to test and you can see there's no G in the word test. So we have the circle showing up. If we add another element here, for example, we add in a T, well, the T is in the word, so that obviously we're not going to be showing the you know incorrect body part here. If we add an O, there's no O in the word test, so now we show a second body part, and it's going to do that all the way until we get through all the different body parts. So that's perfect. Let's just get this back to an empty array, which is what we want. And we wanna make sure, obviously, we're returning a random word instead of just the word test every single time. So if we scroll back down here, the next thing we wanna make actually work with our app is the hangman word. And in this case, the things we care about are the letters that we've guessed. So we can say our guessed letters is just gonna be our guessed letters. And we also care about what the word to guess is because we need to render that as well. So here's our word to guess. So we just need to pass that information into our word here. And all the way at the top, we can create a type for this. Hangman word props is going to be equal. And we have our number to guess or not our number to guess, sorry, our guessed letters. This is going to be a string array. And then we're gonna have our word to guess, which is just a string. 
And now here we can say we have our guest letters and our word to guess, which is of the type hangman word props. We can just get rid of these hard coded values here. And where we used word, we can just change this to word to guess. And now hopefully, yes, you can see that we now have a really long word showing. If I refresh, you can see that we have a much shorter word. So it's dynamically getting the word every single time. And depending on what letters we've guessed, it should hopefully show information in there for the different letters, which is exactly what we want. So now, obviously, the next thing to work on is going to be hooking up what happens when we click on a keys in our keyboard, as well as what happens when we click keys on our actual keyboard that's in front of us. So in order to hook up an event listener for our actual keyboard, not the visual keyboard, but our actual keyboard, we need to use a use effect for this. Now, normally I would use a custom hook that I would create for this, but since we're only gonna be hooking up one event listener, I'm not gonna bother creating a custom event for this. But if you wanna see how to create a custom event for event listeners, I have a completely free React Hooks course that covers every React hook and a bunch of custom hooks. It's gonna be linked down in the description for you. But essentially we need this use effect and inside this use effect, we need to create a handler. This is going to be a function that runs and this function is going to take in a keyboard event. And that's because what we're going to do is we're going to take our document, we're going to add an event listener for key press. And on this key press, we need to call this handler function. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that we clean this up and remove this event listener whenever our use event is done working. So like when our component is removed, so we can remove our event listener for key press. And we can make sure that we are removing that handler that we just created. So this right here is our event listener, and this is just hooking it up and removing it appropriately. So what we can do in here is we can get the key, which we can just say is e.key. Make sure here that I have the proper arrow, arrow, arrow showing up, there we go. And now we can do a simple regular expression. We can say if our key matches, or sorry, does not match a regular expression that just checks for a single letter. So what we can do is we can say the start and the end of our regular expression. If it matches anything between A to Z, then this is going to be true. So if it does not match A to Z, what we want to do is just return, just completely ignore that key that we pressed. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to prevent the default. So whatever was going to normally happen, don't do that. And we want to call a simple function, which is going to add our guest letter, which is our key right here. So again, really simply what this regular expression is doing is just checking to see, did we press a letter between A to Z? If we did, okay, continue on. If we didn't, then just ignore everything. Now let's create that function add guest letter, which takes in a key, which is just a string. So inside this function, what I want to do is I want to check to see if this letter is already in our guest letters, because obviously if we guess the same letter twice, we shouldn't be punished for it. So if that letter is currently guessed, well, I guess, yeah, let's we'll call this letter here. There we go. So if our letter is already guessed, then we can just return. Otherwise, we want to set our guest letters and add that letter in. So we're going to get all the current letters that are inside of here. We're going to return all those current letters and we're just going to add our letter to the end of that array. Super straightforward. So now every single time that we click a key on our keyboard, so for example, if I click A, you can see that it has guessed the letter A for me. If I click B, it's now guessed B and that is not in the word. And I can guess a bunch of different letters and you can see that I've guessed incorrectly. So we would have a loss in this state, but I can just keep guessing because there is no loss state in our scenario. Another issue you're going to notice if I refresh here and I click A, Okay, the A was in there. So let's say I click S. You can see S is not in there. If I click S again, you can see it's still adding these elements to the page, even though I'm guessing the same letter. And we already have a check in here to make sure the letter is not in there. But the reason that this problem is happening is a complex thing to deal with use effect. So the way our use effect is currently written is it runs the use effect once when our component mounts. And since this array is empty, it never runs again. So this handler has this add guest letters function and it has the initial version. So the first time we render our component, this function right here, our guest letters array is empty because that's our default value. So every single time we call our handler, it's using that same old version of our guest letters, which always has an empty array. We wanna make sure we update our handler right here every single time that our function changes, essentially every single time that our letter here changes. So what we could do is we could put our guest letters into here and that is going to technically work. Now, if I just refresh this over here, if I click S, you can see no matter how many times I click it, I'm continually clicking it, it only adds the you know head one time. But the problem is every single time our component re-renders, it is recreating this function and rerunning this event handler. We only want this to rerun when the things inside of it change. For example, our guest letters change. So in order to change that, we can use callback, a use callback. So I can say that our function here, add guest letters, is going to be equal to a use callback. And this use callback is gonna take in a letter, which is a string, and then it's going to return all the information inside here. So it's essentially going to be our function. We're just gonna copy all the code from the function 
paste it right into there, and we can just remove our old version of our function. And then I can just make sure that I import this use callback like that. So that should get rid of all of our different errors as long as it imported up here. Yep, it did. And then we just make sure here we pass an array of the different dependencies we have. In our case, guest letters is the only thing this function depends on. So every time that changes, we're going to rerun our function. So now if I click S, okay, let's try a different letter D. Okay, I click it again. You can see it's not re-adding the head. And it's also not re-rendering this component a bunch of times because this add guest letters only changes every time our guest letters changes. This is kind of complex. And again, if you really want to dive into why I had to do this and how these different hooks work, my full completely free React Hooks course is going to cover that for you. It's linked in the description below. Now, the next thing we should probably work on is our keyboard because right now the keyboard, I can click all the letters all I want, but it doesn't actually do anything. So let's go down to our keyboard and think about what we need to pass into it. Well, first we need to pass in the letters that are active. For example, what letters have we already clicked on? In our case, that's just our guest letters and we wanna filter each letter where the letter is in the word. So we can say word dot or word to guest dot includes letter. So this is just all the letters that are in the word. And then we're gonna have our inactive letters, which we've already created, which is just our incorrect letters right here. Then finally, we need a function for adding a guest letter. And well, we've already created that function, add guest letter. That's this function right here that is going to update our guest letters. So that's pretty straightforward. Now we just need to implement all of this functionality in our keyboard. Let's come inside of here and add all of that information. We're going to have our active letters, our inactive letters, and our add guest letter. There we go. And this is our keyboard props. And we can create a type called keyboard props, set it equal to that. And I'm just gonna copy all this information in there. So we're going to have our active letters, which is a string array. We're going to have our inactive letters, which is a string array. And this right here is going to be a function that takes in a letter string and it returns nothing. So we can just say it returns void. So there we go. There's our different props we're going to use. Now we just need to actually make it so that our button is styled properly based on if it's active, inactive, and have an on click on it. So first, the on click is by far the easiest. When we click on it, add a guest letter. And we want to make sure that the letter that we add is the particular key that we're clicking on. So now if I click on C, you can see that it added C here. Click on D, it's doing the same thing, E, F, G. You can see it's constantly adding these letters. Obviously we don't have any fail state, but you can see that this is working. Now the next thing we need to do is to determine is this button active or inactive. So let's get an active variable. We'll say is active. And that's if our active letters includes this key. I wanna do the same thing for inactive. And that's going to be if our inactive letters contains that key. Then for our class names, what we can do is we can say that our styles.active is going to be rendered if is active is true. So we can say if is active is true, then render out the active style. And copy this down a second time here because we're gonna check if inactive is true, then render my inactive style. Now, if I give that a save, you're gonna notice that we're getting an error. So it seems like we're not passing something down properly. Let's look over here. This should probably say active letters. I think that's probably our error. There we go. Now, if I click on different letters, you can see that the active letters here are rendered in this dark blue, while the inactive ones, this D, M, N, you can see that they don't have that coloring showing to them, but they still allow me to highlight them. We wanna fix that by obviously making them disabled. So go back to my keyboard here. We wanna add the disabled attribute, and this disabled attribute is going to be set if it is active or if it is inactive, just like that. So now you can see I can't highlight or click on any of these buttons that I've already used before. Now the final thing we need to work on is our lose and our win states. So let's just go all the way to the top here. I'm just gonna create some variables for is loser, which is gonna be really simple to create. All we need to do is check if our incorrect letters dot length is greater than or equal to six because there are six body parts you can show. So if you've guessed six or more times wrong, then you have lost. To check to see if you're a winner, it's a little bit more complex. We wanna take the word that we're trying to guess. I wanna split it on that character. And I wanna to try to check to see if every character has been guessed. So we're gonna loop through every single character. And we the way that this every function right here works is if every single iteration of this loop returns true, then every will return true as well. If you're confused by this, I have a full video covering this array method as well as a bunch of others. I'll link in the cards and description for you. But essentially, if our guest letters includes this letter, make sure I spell everything properly. There we go. So if every single letter is included in our guest letters, well, that means that we have one. So what we can do down here is render out the proper text based on if we've won or if we have lost. 
So in our case, let's do the win first. So if is winner, then we can render out text that just says winner refresh to try again. There we go. Make sure I spell everything properly. And we can do the exact same thing for is loser. And this one will just say nice try. And let's just remove that. So now we can just see, we can do a bunch of other guesses and you can see that we've lost. So it says nice try, refresh to try again. But you'll notice something interesting. I can keep clicking on these letters. Obviously, I don't wanna be able to keep clicking on these letters because now I'm a winner and a loser at the same time, which is obviously not correct. So I need to be able to limit the person so that they can't click on letters anymore or interact with the keyboard in any way once they've won. So for my keyboard, I'm gonna actually pass down a property called disabled. I'm gonna set that to true if we are a winner or if we are a loser. And I wanna get that variable in here. So we're gonna have a variable called disabled. It's going to be a Boolean. So I can just say disabled is a Boolean. And by default, let's just set that to false and we'll make it an optional variable up here, just like that. And then all I wanna do is if this is disabled, I also wanna just disable every single button. So let's just do a quick refresh. We're gonna bunch, guess a bunch of letters till we lose. And now you can see we've lost, but you can see it doesn't matter. I can't click on any of these. I can't interact with any of them, but I can still type with my keyboard. So we need to fix that now next. Let's go into our app here. What we can do is inside of our function, if the guess letter includes the letter, or if we are a loser, or if we are a winner, then we wanna make sure that we don't do anything. And I wanna just add those variables of is winner and is loser into my array right here. So now, hopefully, let's just guess a bunch of things till we lose. You can see we've lost, and now I'm typing a bunch of keys, and you can see it doesn't let me interact that way either. Now, the last thing we need to do is if we lose, we should reveal what the actual word is. So we can do that next. Down by our hangman word, what we can do we can have a reveal property, and this is going to be if you are a loser, then we should reveal the word. So in our hangman word, let's add in reveal. We'll make it optional. Set it to a Boolean. Whoops, Boolean. Here we can do our reveal, which by default is just going to be set to false. And what I want to do down here is I want to reveal the letter if it is included in the guest letters or reveal is set to true. So now, Looks like we got an error. Looks like I just need to put a equal sign here instead. There we go. So now the word is showing up entirely when we reveal it. But I also want to specify that the color should be specified based on if we've guessed it or not. So if the guessed letters includes our letter, or sorry, if it does not include our letter and reveal is set to true, then we want it to be red. Otherwise, we want it to be black. So what this little bit of code right here does when I give it a quick save is we're checking, okay, are we revealing the word and did we not guess this letter correctly? So if we didn't guess the letter and the word is revealed because we lost, I wanna make that letter red. So now you can see we guessed P and E correctly, but N and C we missed, so they are showing up in red. Now the final thing we can do is we can make it so like when you click the enter key, it's going to refresh for you and automatically give you a new word. So in our app, we're just gonna do a really simple use effect for that. And again, this is why I would normally use a custom event listener or a custom event listener hook for this. That way I don't have to copy all this code, but I'm just gonna copy this, paste it down. Our handler here is gonna be for on a key press. We'll just do yeah, key press. And we're gonna say if e or if our key is not equal to enter, then return. Otherwise, we're gonna get a brand new word. So we'll just call a function called get word. And we're gonna set our word to guess to that get word function, just like that. Let's just create this simple function. We can do it up here, get word. And this get word function is just going to return this right here. So now for my use state, I can just call that get word function to initially get a word. And then whenever I click on the enter key, it's going to get me a new word. And I'm just gonna make sure I prevent the default as well. So now let's just say we're typing along. Okay, now we've lost, if I click enter, you can see we get a brand new word, but we also need to make sure obviously we clear out our list of guest words as well. So we're gonna set guest letters equal to an empty array. Oops, there we go. So now hopefully we just do a bunch of guessing and get a wrong word, click enter. You can see we're now refreshed with a brand new word and we can start guessing again until we get to the point where we lose, hit enter, same exact thing over and over again. In this video, we covered a few of the React hooks, but if you want to really master every single React hook out there, you're going to want to check out my completely free React hook simplified course. It's going to be linked down in the description below. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.